Uh, I think something went. I think something went horribly wrong. Now that looks like a perfect fit. There's only one problem with this neck. That's a base neck. Well, I guess I'm building a short scale base then. I've been enjoying this view now for about five days straight. I should probably get started on my guitar. Well, I still don't entirely know what I'm doing yet, but I guess the first thing I need to do is route out a spot for this neck, then I can set up my bridge placement. So my method for freehand routing, basically all I do is I route out as much as I can, kind of as close to the line as I can, just really quick and easy. And then I go back and just really slowly follow the line the best that I can. That way I don't have to remove very much material so I don't have to press very hard and let the router do the work. And then I end up with fairly smooth edges. So now that I've got it mostly cut, I'm just gonna take a straight file here and I'm just going to really clean this up to make sure that this is nice and straight. And basically what I'm doing here is I didn't route very deep and I'm basically making a template inside of my guitar to route out the rest of the pocket. And then we'll do it to the other side and then we'll double check the fit. All right, now that we got our template routed out and those edges straightened and this area kind of smoothed out, let's check our fit real quick. And, uh, oh no. Uh, I think something went, I think something went horribly wrong. That is not gonna work. Okay, let me see if I have another neck that will fit that. Now that looks like a perfect fit. There's only one problem with this neck. That's a base neck. Well, I guess I'm building a short scale base then. Okay, now obviously this was my plan from the beginning and the reason why I ordered my body without any routes in it. Now, this neck is absolutely beautiful and I am saving it for a future build. In fact, I might order another one of these bodies from Crimson Custom Guitars to go with this neck, but Here's the thing, you guys know I'm a bass player. Everyone else in this competition is a guitar player. So, I'm likely the only one that's gonna be building the bass. I've never built a short scale bass before and it's something that you guys have been asking me to do for a long time. And I love PRS guitars and I've always wondered why PRS basses don't look like PRS guitars. I probably would own a PRS bass if they did because I love the way PRS guitars look. So I figured why not build a bass that looks like a PRS guitar. Okay, now that I know that my neck pocket template is perfect, I went ahead and set my bridge to make sure my strings line up. And the bridge, we're gonna talk about a little bit later because it is really cool. But let's go ahead now and route this out as deep as we need it to be. All right, I think this is looking good enough for today. Got my neck routed to the perfect level, got my bridge placed. We'll just call it a day today. And I'm packing up to move somewhere else tomorrow, so uh, the next place that I'm in, we'll go ahead and line up and route for our pickups. We're a week and a half away from my deadline. And that's still all that I have. So now I'm in South Dakota and I got a nice beautiful campsite, but I really need to get crack a Man, I absolutely love creating guitars out here in the wilderness. I don't know why more people don't do that. I mean, I issued, you know, a challenge to some of the other builders in this competition to come join me in my workshop and build, and not a single one took me up on it. It's crazy that I'm the only YouTube guitar guy that's out here doing this. I mean, I'm literally the only person that lives and travels in a motorhome that does hey, guitar Dan. videos. Oh, hey Dylan, what's up, man? Uh, can I? I need some toilet paper. Some toilet paper. Oh yeah, actually, I have a spare. Oh, awesome. I keep in my workshop just for emergencies. Thanks. Yeah. 
So what was I saying? Yes, I'm the only YouTuber that lives and travels in a motorhome and does like guitar gear reviews and stuff. Anyway, today I need to get further along on this project. I am just like way behind. So let's go ahead and route for our pickup cavities. So the pickups that I've chosen for this build are a couple of custom wound pickups um, that I've gotten. I actually got them for different projects, but I think they're gonna be really awesome in this project. I've always really loved the tone of a double P bass, one that has a P in the neck and a P in the bridge. I just thought that they always looked really funny. So doing a 51 P in the neck, I actually think helps with that a lot. But you know, now that I'm looking at this, I don't think these pickups are gonna work. I have less than two weeks, I don't know where I'm gonna get another set of pickups, but this, you know, my whole point of wanting to do a PRS bass is that I feel like PRS basses don't look like PRS guitars, and I really want a PRS bass that looks like a PRS guitar, and I think these pickups are just kind of destroying that vibe. Because watch this. So these are obviously guitar pickups, and man, doesn't that just look so much better? This looks so much more like a PRS guitar than if I do this. Right? That just looks like some sort of weird Frankenstein. So at this point, what do I do? I mean, like I said, I've got about a week and a half to get this done. Uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to custom order a set of humbucker size bass pickups, so I'm kind of at a standstill. Thanks for the toilet paper, man. Oh yeah, no problem. So, what's this I overheard you about needing some kind of like custom pickups for a bass? Yeah, so I'm building a bass, but bass pickups just don't look correct on it. So I really need some humbucker size pickups, but I just don't know where I'm going to get some custom to my specification humbucker size bass pickups for this build. I need them, I mean, right now basically if I'm going to if I'm going to pull off this guitar build. Well, since I'm the only like guitar builder YouTuber guy that is portable living in a motorhome, what about these? Let's check these out. Man, these look amazing. Wait. These are bass pickups? Well, yeah, I mean, if, if I could read your mind, what I would say is you want something that functions sort of like a P bass pickup, but that fits in a humbucker package that looks classy enough to be in a PRS style guitar and you want them instantly, why not? Well, I can't say I didn't ask for exactly that. <laughs> No, serious guys. Well, obviously Dylan here from Dylan Talks Tone. He is a mobile YouTuber and he does guitar building and modding and reviews and he makes custom wound pickups. So obviously he planned to meet me out here in South Dakota. Super huge bro for coming all this way to meet me. Nobody else in the guitar build off would do it, but Dylan would. So I think that's really awesome. And uh, you know, he's made a video on these specific pickups. I think you guys should go check out his channel and watch this video about how and why he decided to make them the way that he did. There is not gonna be any better bass pickup for this build than these right here. They just look so cool. And they are the split P pickup that I was hoping for internally. They just look right at home on this body style. Um, I don't think that I could be happier with them. So I'm excited to hear them. Right, got some shiny new pickups, so we're gonna need to make some cool pickup rings for them. I usually make mine just out of craft plywood. The way I do it is real simple. Just take a pickup ring and I trace it. It doesn't have to be perfect because when I freehand route, I don't try to get perfect the first try. I just try to get close and then I fix it with other tools. Now I know what you're thinking. Dan, how do you freehand route so well? Well, I think the obvious answer is that uh, years of not practicing. This is just close enough. We're going to fix it with some hand tools now. Now, how about that? It's a good looking match set. So I want to try out a new concept for this base headstock. And I'm deciding right now if I'm going to go through with it or not because it's kind of crazy. Basically, instead of installing your typical tuners like this, I want to install them like this because that's going to put the tuner in a far more ergonomic spot for you to reach when you're tuning. And it's going to create a natural break angle 
as the string goes down into these holes where these tuner pegs are gonna be. I've not really seen this done before, certainly not on a bass. I know classical guitars, I've seen it like that. Uh, upright bass is very similar. I haven't seen it done on a bass. I think it's gonna have a lot of advantages, but I've just never done it before. And the time that you want to be experimenting is when you're out of time in your project and it's a competition and your reputation is on the line. So that's the best time to experiment, right? But after drawing it up, I think it's gonna be really cool. So I'm gonna go for it. Hopefully I don't waste too much time on this and hopefully it actually works. But in order for there to be enough room for this tuning peg to go in horizontally, I'm gonna need to increase the thickness. So I have this red oak board and so I'm gonna glue that on there to get us to the proper thickness that we need in order to do this. But first I'm gonna cut out my shape. and I'm gonna cut out a loose shape and then I'm gonna glue it on and then I'll route it so that it's even. So if you weren't getting the picture before, maybe you're getting it now. This is how the tuner peg will work. And it's a much more ergonomic grip. So easier to reach. And it's gonna create a natural break angle. As you can see, it's breaking on the wood right there. So I knew that I was gonna have to scallop out a little bit. I don't know how much I'm gonna need to scallop. So let's keep going. Seems like the idea might work. Let's try this multi-purpose cutting bit. Let's see what happens. Now I know what you're thinking. Dan's using a Shinto rasp, just like Tamara uses over on her channel, 3x3 Customs, but um, nope, this is actually a shizzle rasp not the same thing. You get these at Harbor Freight in a pack that comes with like five or six of them for about three dollars and uh, they they do what their name says. They are shizzle. But you know what? They get the job done. I've been working real hard on this project. I think I deserve a break. Since I'm in South Dakota, I think I might go check out Mount Rushmore. Hey babe, wanna see Mount Rushmore? Yeah? All right, let's go see Mount Rushmore. I wonder if anybody else's workshop is driving distance from Mount Rushmore. I guess maybe Dylan. <laughs> well, that is pretty majestic.
All right, same base, different place. I've got uh, less than one week from today to have my video done and uploaded, and this is all I got. So better get started. And it's really windy here in Sturgis. Sorry, there's nothing I can do about that. All right, let's set up shop. Okay, so I've got my neck angle set perfectly, and I'm not gonna get into the weeds of why I'm doing this, but basically, I just want this guitar to have a full range of adjustability for whoever ends up owning it. And right now, I am at the max of my bridge height right here, and it would be fine, but like I said, I want the user to be able to go up and down as they please. So I'm gonna raise this bridge up a little bit, and I'm just gonna do it by using some of the same plywood I used to make these pickup rings, just to raise it up about three millimeters, maybe. Just one more thing before I can start making this thing look beautiful. I need to replace this nut. Like I mentioned earlier, I want this base to be fully adjustable to the person who ends up owning it. So I'm gonna install this all parts, full adjustable brass base nut. I love these things. And uh, it's not gonna be the perfect size slot, so I'm gonna need to make that slot bigger. All right, let's go ahead and sort of add a PRS looking scallop right there. got to do some fret work. Everyone's favorite part of the guitar building process, right? Um, it's actually not so bad if you have the right tools. I'm really bummed. I got this amazing notch straight edge from Crimson Custom Guitars, but of course this is not a guitar scale neck. This is a bass neck. This side sort of works if I don't care about the first three frets but obviously I care about the first three frets, so I'm not gonna be able to use this. And in fact, I actually don't even have a notch straight edge for a 30 inch scale base. So I'm gonna have to make one real quick. All right, so here I've got my $3 yardstick from Walmart, and I'm just gonna line up where the frets are and mark where to grind it out. We'll be sure to grind up the metric side because we're in America. If you haven't seen it already, I have a video on how you can make your own guitar tools out of stuff you already have. Obviously the quality is not gonna be near what you get from like, say, Crimson Custom Guitars, but it's super cheap and it works just fine. It's what I've been using all along and it's what I'm gonna use in this build right here. I love this workbench. It might be the nicest tool that I own. There we go. Ah, spilled my coffee. Gotta give them what they want, right? Not the uh, prettiest notch straight edge that I've ever made, but this is probably a single use tool because I don't know if I'll be making another 30 inch scale base anytime soon. Um, obviously I'll still keep it because it still makes a great yardstick, but uh, in the meantime, I didn't want to spend more than like 10 minutes making this tool since I probably will only ever use it one time for this purpose. So as long as it gets my neck straight so I can level it and it doesn't scratch up my fretboard super bad, I'm happy. All right, 
glad that's over with. Okay, let's get started on the finish now. I think we're finally at the finishing stage. Now, since this red oak didn't match the uh, sapil, sapile, whatever you call it, the type of mahogany that's on the body, um, I'm gonna attempt to stain it to match. So I'm gonna use some Minwax Early American. Now this is a tad more brown than the wood on the body, but this has a little bit of a red tint in it. So I think it's gonna be fine. But if not, I also have some red chestnut that I might just swipe over the top of it if I need to make it a little more red. But I don't think I'm gonna need to because this already has some red undertones in it. So I think it's gonna match just fine. The masking is just a fail safe. I am going to try to use careful hands more than anything to keep the stain only on this portion and not on the rest of the neck. That looks pretty dang close. Way down here, like that, it looks like the same wood. That's awesome. All right, so for my finish, I have no idea what the other contestants in this competition are doing, but I really wanted to tie in my charity because that's what this whole competition is all about, right? It's not about trying to win bragging rights. It's about raising money and awareness for our charities. And so I really wanted to tie in my finish with that. My charity is Life Water. Now, Life Water is a ministry that's dedicated to bringing fresh and clean water to communities around the world because if there's two things that I believe that no one should be without in this world. It's fresh, clean water and the love of Jesus. And that's the other thing that Life Water brings is they bring the good news of the gospel to these communities, the true life-giving living water they bring along with these clean water projects. And so I truly believe in the ministry and I support them and I think that you guys should too. And so for this finish, I wanted to do a two-tone ocean wave. Now, originally I had planned to try to stain this some sort of aqua blue color to make it look like water, and I decided against that. I think it's just not me, and I think with the beautiful colors of wood that are already in this body, I just didn't want to do that. So I'm going to keep it with natural earth tones, but I am going to engrave in this ocean wave, but it's so much more than an ocean wave, okay? It's going to be sort of a yin-yang effect with dark on one side, light on the other. And if you think about an ocean wave, it's two forces sort of colliding. You've got water rushing in and water pushing back that creates the wave. So it's it really represents the balance of good and evil in this world. And I think one of the ways that Life Water is fighting the good fight of good versus evil is they are bringing clean water and the love of Jesus to these communities around the world. So that's what this finish is all about. I think I can pull this off. So let's go ahead and give it a try. are ready. As soon as the stain is fully dried and cured, we're going to slap on another coat of tongue oil and we're going to be good to go. All right, today is finishing day. Now you may notice I actually already have one coat of tongue oil on this thing. I started last night when it was dark out because this thing needs to be done tomorrow and so I couldn't waste any time. So I went ahead and put on the first coat last night. First coat takes the longest to dry. It needs 12 hours. The rest of them, uh, when it's warm and breezy like this, uh, you can get away with just like four to six hours between coats. So I'm gonna try to get three, four, maybe even five coats of the Formby's Tongue Oil on this. And we're gonna be buffing with steel wool in between coats, which is what I'm gonna do right now. And then we'll go ahead and lather on another coat. And this thing should start looking real good here soon. All right. Now it's time to wire this thing up. And can we just take a moment and say how awesome Brad was at his predictions? He freaking nailed it. And with me, it's no exception. Um, I am gonna do a few wiring tricks because it's me. I actually thought about not doing any wiring tricks just because he said that I was going to, but then I was like, nah, that's no fun. So I've got three push-pull pots that are going to be my series and parallel switches for neck pickup, bridge pickup, and then both pickups together. 
And then I'm gonna have independent volumes for each as well as a master volume that will kind of double as a tone pot because I'm not doing a treble bleed kit. So you can roll off the highs just by backing off the volume a little bit. And then I have this double pull, double throw switch that I'm throwing in there. I'm not gonna tell you why because you're gonna have to watch my next video, the sound demo to figure out what that is. And then I also have another button on there that again, I'm not gonna tell you what it does. And I know what you're thinking, kill switch and it is not a kill switch. So you're gonna have to watch my sound demo next week. Unfortunately, I do not have time to record sound samples like I normally do for my build videos. So you're just gonna have to hear it with your imagination until next week, but I'll be sure to upload some awesome sound samples. We are gonna get a super wide range of tone with this thing, but there's one piece here that I have to show you because it is absolutely incredible. Check out this output jack right here. This is a pure tone output jack, but look at this engagement. Holy cow, they offer the best engagement in the history of the universe. Well, actually that's not true. The best engagement ever was when I proposed for my wife wedding singer style on an airplane with a ukulele, which you could watch that video after if you desire to. That was the best engagement ever, but this is the next best engagement ever. Pure tone, write that down. Just kidding, you don't have to. I'll put a link in the description, as I will for all the components that I'm using in this guitar. Now, as with all of my builds, you can find a wiring diagram for this over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Dan Thompson. But if you're not into crowdfunding, I totally understand. I'm going to be selling my wiring diagrams on my website, gunsandguitars.net, here shortly, as soon as I figure out how to do it. But you can check that out and sign up for my email list so that you know when they are available for sale. And they will be very inexpensive because that's the whole part of my channel, right? Spend less, play more. So they are not gonna be expensive. All right, well, in case you didn't know it, you already voted for my bass as the best just by watching this video. So thank you for your vote. But if you really think that my bass is worthy of your vote, there's a number of other ways that you can vote for it. One is by following Crimson Custom Guitars on Instagram. And when they post a photo of my build, just click the like button. So if you're following them and you click the like button, that's a vote for my instrument. The other way you can vote is with your dollar. So if you go to thegreatguitarbuildoff.com and you donate to my charity of choice, Life Water, that is also a vote for my instrument. Although that's really just a vote for Life Water and you should do that anyway, regardless of how you feel about my instrument. The last way that you can vote is by bidding on my auction, which will be live at the end of this month. So, of course, that's really only one person voting, just whoever has the most money in my auction. So, if you don't think that you can afford to win my auction, then definitely give your money to LifeWater. I mean, either way, your money's going to LifeWater. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification because next week I am gonna be uploading the sound demo of this bass and you do not want to miss it. I'm also thinking about doing a video maybe where I critique other people's builds and maybe I might even do a dedicated video to that Ray Ross bridge. I think that'd be pretty cool. So keep your eye out for those videos. Until next time, I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in that next video.